seems as if things have finally been resolved within the show-offs. And there stands your next contender for the SmackDown Women's Championship. Eric Young wants his wish. Dean Ambrose more than willing to grant it. Two generations of WWE Champions staring eye to eye. And you have to feel another match is on the horizon between these two greats. Hello everyone and welcome, this is Smackdown Live, a huge evening for the blue brand coming up for us this evening. We're in New Mexico and we do have a lot in store for you this e Hang on, that is Shane McMahon in the office for the Smackdown General Manager. And I think Christian James is not going to be best pleased with that. Rightfully calling him out on something as well and telling him to s and sending him home as well. Finally having something against the man who seems to still think he's the got some power around here. Shane sent on his way. Good. Talk about a big evening coming up for SmackDown Live. Two title matches for us this evening. Gonna be a great one, no doubt about it. Christian James wanted to. We finally hear it, ladies and gentlemen. The arrival of the Good Brothers tonight on SmackDown Live. And next week, Ambrose and Eric Young to square off in their hardcore match. That'll be great to see. But that man most certainly isn't. Seems as if AJ Styles hasn't grasped the where he thinks are working on SmackDown Live for him. And the general manager more than happy to put Styles in his place once again, reminding him he's at the very bottom and that his match is up next. Christian James firing back against the originals, but tonight, ladies and gentlemen, you heard it right, two title matches. The other one for you, coming up before our main event of the evening, the Intercontinental title on the line. Roderick Strong will challenge Jay White for the Intercontinental title. That'll be discussed later on this evening. Right now, we start things off. Sin Cara in the ring. He is getting ready to go one-on-one -on -one against the man who we just saw a moment ago in AJ Styles. A, an impactful way to kick things off on SmackDown Live, no doubt about it. Christian James still sticking it to the originals, and I'm glad that he is, I have to say. It is great to see it happening. And it's, you know, it, it couldn't happen to a, couldn't happen to a nicer bunch of guys, he said incredibly sarcastically. Bad luck Farley accompanying AJ Styles to the ring here, and you see there's no tag team title around Farley's waist. Freebird rules, whatever you want to call them, they're in effect here tonight. Tama Tonga will tag with Tangaloa once again for the first time since Extreme Rules, I believe. They defend the tag team titles against the Good Brothers. Farley back to essentially bodyguard duties, the underboss. Back to being side. Of course, formerly it was Finn Balor. Now it's AJ Styles, that little subtle nod from the originals to Balor as if to say you lost everything and I took your bodyguard to go along with it. Styles ready to go here this evening. Of course, he thinks in his mind he should be competing for all the titles, but the reality is, after himself and Farley both tried to take out the general manager, that they're at the bottom. Styles definitely is at the bottom. He's the mastermind behind everything. He's the one who wants to burn SmackDown to the ground in the envisionment of an original's shape of mind. We've got the general manager isn't standing for, and it's a good thing that he isn't as well. It has to be said, we're ready to go here this evening. So we have this contest for you. And uh, on top of that, the two title matches. So looking forward to everything that SmackDown Life has coming its way for us. 
Got a lot to uh, got a lot to work themselves up for this week, of course. I mean, we have Monday Night Raw coming out of Great Balls of Fire. What a show Great Balls of Fire was as well. There's no doubt about it. And, of course, we've got ECW coming up tomorrow as well as we build towards the Elimination Chamber. So all the brands have to start clicking and smack their live. I think it certainly start clicking on the road to SummerSlam. Another attempt there by Sig Cara. Not too certain what it was, but Styles put the stop on it there in with that clothesline. AJ Styles is looking to end it already. Styles clash, nailed him! Foot on the ropes for Sin Cara there, though, makes the save. Or maybe just made his day that much more worse. To the outside goes AJ Styles. Phenomenal forearm. This one is over. AJ Styles has to work his way up from the bottom on SmackDown Live. And he is very quickly starting to pull that off. Cover made with no surprise as to who's the winner. Styles wins it this evening in the first match of SmackDown Live. And are you kidding me? Shane McMahon told to go home just a moment ago, watching on backstage and cheering at the fact that Styles is victorious as well. Really tells you which bed he sleeps in. Styles, your winner though. And I imagine a long, long road back to the top awaits him. But remember, Styles, you made this bed. Last week on SmackDown Live, we saw a highly impactful contest between Ruby Riot and Paige to determine the number one contender for the SmackDown Women's Championship. After last week, we now know that Paige is next in line for the SmackDown Women's Championship. She will face Becky Lynch, I'm not too certain on the date. I do not know what it's been signed for, if it's been signed at all. But what I do know is the next in line will be Paige once again. Paige and Becky Lynch have had quite a rivalry in this universe. They've shared quite a lot with one another. They've uh, had quite the past, uh, both on SmackDown and on Raw as well. They've had their uh, run-ins with one another. But they will, uh, they will do battle again in a short few weeks' time, I would imagine. Coming up this evening, Paige has to prepare for it. She has to get herself ready for the match. She wants to do that by being in ring. But she's going to do that by going up against the runner-up of the May Young Classic earlier this year, Miko Satomura. Paige, ready to go. Second match in just as many weeks and really shows the fight that it's in Paige right now. She's uh, almost as if the, the whole maybe finishing things with Ruby Wright and the Wright squad fight and maybe putting that all to past has really woken up Paige once again and made her realize that she could be the champion once again. She can have the women's title for the first time in a year and a half. It's at the cusp of her fingertips. All she has to do is work her way to the title match, beat Becky Lynch, make sure that no one really gets involved. And I think that's the main thing here. If she wants to fight in the ring to make sure she's better, to make sure she's more well prepared for her match at, uh, or rather, whenever that match is, uh, you know, if she wants to keep on fighting in these contests, well, there may come a reality that she may lose her match and then find herself with a third party involved. And that could happen here tonight with Miko Satomura. Like I said, let's not forget, she's the runner-up of the Mae Young Classic. She's a, a veteran of women's wrestling, a career spanning back 20 years plus, I think. Of course, she went into the tournament and... And she was just kind of seen as the veteran, maybe, with uh, not that much going for her. But she ended up knocking out everyone up until she met Jordan Grace in the finals. And they tore it down in the classic. Of course, Grace walked out with the win on that one. Satomura, though, has really struggled to find her, uh, her footing on SmackDown Live. Whereas Grace has really settled in and really become one of the top talents of the women's division on Monday nights. The same can't really be said for Satomura. That's it's kind of a shame, but then again, I think I, I talked about this last night with Ember Moon, how tough it is to break in on uh, this division with the likes of Paige and the, the Riot Squad and Oscar and Becky Lynch. It's such a tough division to break into. And it's really unforgiving if you can't make the most of your opportunities. Sad to say it, but that is the case. Look out, back breaking up by Satomura. Here she goes now, unloading away. Big forearm in the face there. 
Look, if you have a crucifix roll up here, maybe trying to steal one. Might be trying to get herself in talks for a title. No, kick out. Early count there, only a one. Haruka Rana now will connect instead from Satomura turning things around. She, she gained a slight edge and now she's looking to run away with this contest. Really, what a big win it would be for her over the number one contender. And you'd assume if she does beat the number one contender to, to the women's title, she's suddenly in talks for that title. She suddenly probably deserves a title match in all fairness. That's what I talked about with Paige. If she wants to do things this way, she has to make sure that she isn't going to end up losing these matches, costing herself the chances. Another Harakarana takedown there by Nico Satomura. Elbow drop into the chest as well. Doing good work now. Paige again, ever resilient, ever resourceful. Makes the counter. In the corner we go now. Let's see what Paige can come up with here. Oh my goodness! Headbutting, headbutting ruthlessly away on Satomura there. Taking some fight out of her, that's for certain. Devastating blows from Paige. Doesn't decide to go for the cover though, which is quite surprising. Sidewalk slam instead. Now she'll go for the cover. I would have thought after those headbutts, Satomura was over and done, but it seems not the resiliency of the veteran. Getting her the shoulder up at one. Shrugging off the, the kick there, step up in Zaguri there, very nicely done. Satomura may be going to find a second win now. Maybe she'll look for that Death Valley driver of hers. But led her all the way to the finals of the May Young Classic. She'll go up high instead. Huge risk being taken by Satomura, will it pay off? Oh, went for a big time leg drop. Page out of the way in time. And now with control of the arm, Okada-esque with the wrist lock lariats. Becky Lynch, you better believe, is watching on it. A number one contender right now. As she connects with the page turner to put away Satomura to seal victory. No, the veteran won't say die. Satomura kicks out at two. As much as Paige is trying to end this one, Satomura is simply not staying down, simply not going to give in. Calling her to her feet, she is going to look for that Death Valley driver. Will she be able to connect with it? Yeah. Trying to put her up on his shoulders. Paige rolls out of the way. And it's the beginning of the end for Satomura now. Rampage DDT. Head drilled into the mat. Becky Lynch. Are you watching? Because there is your number one contender, Paige, your winner. She is victorious once again. Paige with the win as she builds herself up, as she psychs herself up. Get her hands on Becky Lynch. Once more, those old rivals will do battle for the SmackDown Women's title. Can Paige shut up the originals? Can she take the title away from it? Uh-oh, look out, look out on the ramp. Champ is here. Lynch, something to say. We talk about trying to crush the hopes and dreams of your opponent. I said these two women were rivals, but my goodness. Lynch ruthless. Well, there you have it, folks. Signed verbally by the SmackDown Women's Champion, Becky Lynch will defend her title against Paige in two weeks' time. Old rivals do battle again. Move on with more action on our way. The last contest of the evening already before we make it to the double title matches this evening. Two title matches coming up for you later on tonight. Before that, Chad Gable will go one on one against Robert Roode and Jason Jordan at ringside. This is uh, certainly interesting to see. 
Not, uh, not too certain why that's the case, but Gable uh, kind of had a look around for a moment as if to say, where the hell is Jason Jordan? And I could ask the same question about that as well. I mean, you'd want, in a match like this, which is a, a huge chance for Gable, remember, he is facing um, a former world champion. He's facing a guy who just went to war in a steel cage against Bobby Fish two weeks ago. You do not want to be really alone on that. You want the support of your uh, of your tag team partner. And really, if you're on SmackDown Live, I mean, what is more important than having the back of your partner? And it seems as if that is certainly not the case that Jason Jordan has right now. If, if there was a case for it, let's say, okay, it, 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 obviously, I'm reading too much into this, but with what happened with the American show-offs, of course, on Smack, uh, just a, over over the last few weeks on SmackDown Live, speculation starts to build quickly. Why wouldn't you want to have the back of your tag team partner? And you know, uh, okay, I could be wrong. There could be, I mean, there's something. You know, obviously, if something came up like a family emergency, that would be pretty rude of me. No pun intended. To be jumping through hoops and jump into conclusions but it does feel as if Gable in a way has been hung out to dry against a competitor like Robert Roode. Roode has been on it I think is the best way you can say he has untapped himself he has un he has unlocked himself really and he is firing away you know we saw it at judgment day in the steel cage match yes he lost but it was one of his strongest performances in a long time. And then was it, if it wasn't last week, you know, two weeks ago in SmackDown Live, easily taking care of Sin Cara. Even in defeat, Robert Roode looks like a winner because he's found a mean edge to him. Bobby Fish may have woken up something within the glorious one. But it's a big chance for Chad Gable this evening. There's no doubt about that one. Let's see what he can do here against Rude. Nice talk to a backbreaker there by Robert Rude as he gets going now. Oh, Lariat right in the back of the head. Chad Gable struggling off the start. And I mean, this may be the case where he doesn't have that little added momentum. He doesn't have that little pick-me-up ringside in Jason Jordan to kind of be his, his hype man, shall we say. Cover made by Rude. Looking for win early on. Two count there. The best thing that Gable really wants this early on in the contest to be already kicking out at two. Back suplex it coming, got it. Gable starting to get a bit more aggressive now, stomping away on the glorious one. Looking to really cement his impact not only on this match but on Rude himself. Diamond's carry there from the knee position. Gable goes out, uh, sorry, Rude goes out to the apron. Gable forcing him back in the ring there. Nicely done indeed. Chad Gable do here. Tag team specialist Gable maybe, but he had an opportunity to shine early on in this year in the King of the Ring. Eliminated in the first round by Mustafa Ali, but the chance was still there for Gable to leave his mark. Nice drop kick though by Gable. Leg drop follows up from the former tag team champion. The turnbuckle we go now. Look out for Rude. Oh, shoulder first into that ring post. Knee in the chest to follow up with it. Say what you will about Gable. Say what you will about Jordan not being here as well. There's certainly some aggression from Gable, though, that's arrived to this contest. I like to see it. Look out, neck breaker incoming, though, from Rude. Plants him into the mat. Simple moves like that. I talked about Rude at Great Balls of Fire, about how he's not really... Uh, an absolute world beater of a talent but how you put him in that ring and he is a in his own way he's he can be dangerous he can be problematic to take care of because he's so well versed even in just the basics like that old Bruce Lee quote about a man who's practiced one kick 10,000 times that's Robert Roode really able though well versed of course in his Matt Wrestling Olympian Former Olympian, so he knows what he's doing when he has Gable, uh, when he has Rude down on the mat. Look out now. 
This is definitely not down on the mat. This is high risk territory for Chad Gable. Rude though, back elbow gets out of it on the top rope now. Blockbuster from Robert Roode. Looking to seal it with victory. Beautiful move into the pinning predicament. Shoulder up in time from Gable. The more I'm seeing of this contest, the more I'm enjoying what Chad Gable's bringing to the table, I must say. Oh, nice back elbow counter from Gable. Gets him out of it. Trying to psych himself up. That was maybe an amateur mistake right in front of Robert Roode. Roode, though, can't capitalize. Gable stops him. In with the lariat. He comes down. Two of them. Ducks under. Leaping clothesline. Takes Roode off his feet. Gable starting. The cog starting to move it in Chad Gable. Roode taking off his feet for there. Down to one knee. He's dazed, and Gable sees the chance in front of him to shine. Northern Lights suplex, beautiful bridge. His feet are almost flat in that position, but it's only one. He'll take himself to the top rope though. What could Gable do from this far up? Willing to risk it all, Root Salt. No, knees are up in time. Knees are up from Root. Spine buster from him as well. Chad Gable was putting the pieces together and suddenly it all fell apart for him. One move to go. Root in. Glorious DDT. One, two, three. Robert Rudy, your winner. Gable, he was putting together a fine contest. And I am deeply impressed by the work of Chad Gable, but the question once again lingers. Where in the world was Jason Jordan? No excuses can be made for a fine performance, so rude your winner this evening on SmackDown Live. Congratulations to him on that one. And, oh, what the hell is this? Styles and Shane McMahon backstage. They seem to be talking about something. Couldn't hear what it was though, unfortunately, but they still have not left the arena. Coming up next though, ladies and gentlemen, it's the first of two title matches this evening. Roderick Strong challenging Jay White for the Intercontinental title. Ready to go here with one or two title matches this evening. This match came about as a result of a, a house show during the week for SmackDown Live. Roderick Strong picked up a pinfall victory over Jay White on that house show and thus earned himself a title shot. A huge opportunity here for the Saviors as Roderick Strong looks to vie for the Intercontinental title. You see Drew Gulak with him, Ricochet not here, but to certain why the leader of the Saviors wouldn't be here with one of his disciples, his pupils, whatever he calls them has a huge opportunity in front of him against the switchblade, but that was quite revealing news to me when I showed up. You know, I showed up, I looked through the card, and I asked uh, Christian James, I said, the hell is uh, Strong done to deserve this title shot? I thought this would have been Ricochet's. This was Ricochet versus White. 100% would agree, but he told me Strong picked up a win on a house show, and he thought he deserved the, uh, the title match. And commend him for that one, for making that decision. Smart move there by the uh, SmackDown general manager. Here comes the man looking to bounce back from that loss, it would seem. The Intercontinental Champion, little changes to his attire there. Nice new white boots on the champion as he comes towards the ring. Last time, of course, we saw White, I believe, was two weeks ago when he went one on one against Finn Balor in the main event. Was supposed to be AJ Styles. Changed at the 11th hour. Styles came into the ring, though. Styles crashed to Balor, costing him the um, opportunity the Intercontinental Champion. Unfortunate there for uh, Finn Balor. Jay White will certainly be glad about the fact that he is the champion. Say what you will about the switchblade. He fought, he earned that title at Judgment Day and now in his second title match already. Jay White a busy, busy champion. And he bounced back from that loss though on that house show. Can he recover? Can he claim victory here when the big stage is on, when the big stage is present, when the title is on the line, when it's an oh so important match. Like this one is for him. We'll see how it will go. First title matchup of the evening. 
Runner at strong ready, Drew Gulak giving him some last word of advice on the outside. I assume Ricochet, if he is here this evening, would have done the same. Could this be a huge evening for the Saviors? Could they claim their first strap? Since becoming a group, could they claim their first bit of gold? Or will Roderick Strong, and with the Saviors along with it, breathe with the switchblade? We are about to find out. There stands the challenger. So weird to see Roderick Strong, what he has become from what I remember him, a former member of the Horsemen, a man who fought with honor, with integrity, with valor. Now a man who seems to just be gone. Lights are on, but no one's home. Weird how things can change in the blink of an eye, but there stands the Intercontinental Champion. Will he still be the Intercontinental Champion? Come the end of this contest, find out. I'll tell you what though, absolutely gonna get a great contest between these two guys, there's no denying it. And I think we have another title matchup coming up after this as well. SmackDown Live really stacking the deck against us this week. I am loving it though. Say what I will about competition as a fan. Always love to see this kind of stuff. Here we go, first title match of the evening. Roderick Strong, Jay White, ready to go. Intercontinental title on the line. Bell sounds and straight into a continental tie up. Jay White wouldn't want to get too aggressive too quickly. Wouldn't want to really try and, and pounce on a chance because whatever's happened to Roderick Strong mentally, I don't think it's affected Roderick Strong physically. He's still as good of a wrestler as I remember him being on ECW. And of course, Jay White figured that out. I'm not too certain how the match ended. But, um... Roderick Strong pinned him, then clearly he did something right. Strong going to work on the armor, Jay White. Smart move right away. Try and take away Blade Runner as early as possible. Force White, I think, on his feet. White coming in there using the right arm as opposed to the left here that was targeted to hit that lariat. Hard chop in the chest now. Jay White breaking out some early shots early on. Misses with that discus forearm, but Strong still feeling the sting maybe of that chop. Wasn't able to capitalize. Up against the ropes. And here goes Roddy Strong. Talk about Ricochet being the savior of SmackDown Live. How apt is it that a nickname of Roderick Strong is the Messiah of the Backbreaker? A savior and a Messiah working as one. Uranagi Backbreaker there by Roderick Strong connects. Jay White coming up with a counter there though to that chop. Suplex there, simple but effective work from the Switchblade early on. And turn back away. Can you see here? Oh, headlock punch. Jay White using what brought him to the dance, using what brought him to the Intercontinental title. Why not? Worked well before. I stop now. Up and over the top rope goes Jay White. The Roderick Strong definitely going to do some work on the back. You could tell what he was going to do from a mile away. Back suplex onto the apron. My goodness. Ruthless landing for the switchblade. Roderick Strong continuing to take advantage here on the announce table on the outside. Double underhook. Backbreaker as well. The back of Jay White very early on being targeted. Being worked over. And then dumped face first on the apron. That is not a nice landing at all. Champion in trouble early on. No doubt about it. Roddy to the top rope right now. What will happen here? Big risk. Will it pay off? Looks for the drop kick. White swatted it away. Brings him in now. Front face lock. STO. And the champion able to break out a quick counter. Quick cover as well. What can he get on Roderick Strong? Only a count of one. Intercontinental title. Still on the line here. Roderick Strong well aware of that. Chops in the chest there from Jay White. Sent into the turnbuckle though by Roderick Strong. Oh! -ho! Caught him with an almighty shot that looked like right in the jawline. Saito suplex follows up. Champ again in trouble. Roderick Strong really showing him what's what. Jay White comes up with the counter though. Forearm in the face. Now it's the switchblade who'll take it to the top rope. Drop kick and he gets countered as well. Tip for tap between champion and challenger right there. Drop kick from Strong. Second rope he'll go to. And he'll get the elbow drop on Jay White. Cover made for the title. Do we have a new Intercontinental Champion? Two count. 
Shoulder up in time. Another strong trying to keep the, the ball rolling there. White comes up with a counter. Big back suplex. Held him in the air for a few moments. But coming down hard. And as he did with that knee as well. Right in the chest for the challenger. Now the guy really hit the, one of their huge moves thus far. Oh! That suplex backbreaker from Strong. These guys pacing themselves as they know what is to come. They know what they've got to put on the line. Great strength there by Strong in that gut wrench. Deadlift gut wrench powerbomb, it looked like more than anything. Double underhook suplex, no double underhook backbreaker again. A back of white in agony. Courtesy of Roderick Strong, cover made again. Fit playing the resiliency. In the heart of Jay White there. He got that early. Roderick Strong in complete control of the champion right now. Olympic slam will connect. What can Jay White do here? He's got to find something to turn this match around right now, and it's not looking all that good for him. In the corner he goes, hard chop in the chest. Roderick Strong lights up another one. White stumbles out of the turnbuckle. Roderick Strong, after all the work he's done on the back, that's, this is a, a dangerous hold now. This count or clutch could result in a new Intercontinental Champion. White's back, bending. The champion fighting. Great counter from Jay White from behind now. What can we see? Another back suplex. How much does that take out of his back, though, is the big question. Okay, stump puller. Stump puller from White, thinking on his feet there. Love to see it. Roderick Strong gets out of it and oh, sends it to the outside again in front of Drew Gulak. Drew just watching on there. Imagine Ricochet's watching on as well. Wherever he may be, back in the ring we go now. That's the, oh, hang on. Oh, to Jericho. Strong remembering his times in the Four Horsemen. Lion Tamer on Jay White. Look at how the back is stretched. A body in huge punishment, but still, Jay White there, but a slip his way out of it. White is still alive. And he's found some breathing room to work with. Jay White's starting to put some pieces together now. Can this lead him to victory? Can this lead him to hold on to his title? Strong counters, slips his way out of that hold. Great counter from the challenger. Look out, back suplex into that face buster. Roddy Strong got all of it. Covers White, new champion. Oh, shoulder up at two. Thought he had him, thought he had him right there. Just not to be the case. Kick out, Strong. Could be one move away, could look for the end of heartache, could look to put the reign of the switchblade to an end, but Jay White is fighting back. And White going to work on the leg once again in this contest. Maybe trying to take out the ability for him to stand on his own two feet. Drop kick now into the other knee. Single underhook suplex from White. Has he found his calling? Has he found that fight within him in the same way that he had to at Judgment Day? Strong counters, huge chop in the chest. He could look at any moment for the end of Hardy. Kick in the small of the back. While he's targeting him, Jay White, this whole contest. But the switchblade comes fighting back. These two men fighting until the very end to be the Intercontinental Champion. Kiwi Crusher, got him! Why don't he need one opening to connect with it? Try as you might, Roderick Strong. It doesn't seem enough. Blade Runner! Cover from White. With one, two, Jay White retains the Intercontinental title. He was tested. He was put to his limits. And his back was stretched like no other. But he leaves with a title around his waist. But hang on. There is the man himself. The savior of SmackDown Live. 
And that's the calling of Ricochet. That never means a good thing. And it still does it with bloody strong and Gulak. Assaulting White in the ring. Double backbreaker. And I put the boots to the champion. Ricochet watching on. As his man do the dirty work. Gulak. Gulak. Drew Gulak. Torturing the Intercontinental Champion. Jay White is being tortured in the ring and Ricochet is loving it. The Saviors targeting Jay White. That was only one title match of the evening, folks. What will happen in our main event? The Good Brothers challenge the Gorillas of Destiny for the tag team titles. It's up next. Wow. Things picked up with that one. And they're about to pick up right now. You wondered for so long who got traded for Naito. To get a guy that big, I had to trade a team that big. It, it, it hurt my heart to lose the Good Brothers. But it was a decision that had to be made. The most successful tag team in the history of this universe. Four time world tag team champions, Gallows and Anderson. You can try and convince me any time you like about any other tag team in the world. I am not having it. As I will always say, Seth Rollins is the best wrestler in the world. He's the greatest of all time. This is the best tag team of all time. No contest in my opinion. No one is better than the Good Brothers. And I don't say that as some disillusioned little fanboy way in over his head. The stats speak for themselves. Four world tag team titles. These guys are machines in the ring. I will never not support the Good Brothers, but they are doing battle tonight against a ruthless set of tag team champions and one man whom they share quite a past with. And it's the man leading the fray, the former Intercontinental Champion, Tama Tonga Tangaloa, back to work this evening as the Gorillas of Destiny. Freebird rules applying here, it would seem, to those tag team titles. I'm sure Shane McMahon had a part to play in that one. But towards the ring come the trio. Bad Luck Farley accompanying Tama Tonga and Tangaloa. Not a clue what the Iron Man mask is doing on the face of Tama Tonga, but that was certainly the case. They said the former Intercontinental champion lost the title, of course, to Jay White at Judgment Day. Tangaloa and Bad Luck Farley defending the titles against Sanity, but it seems as if with the loss of the Intercontinental title, Tama Tonga going back maybe to what he does best, tag team division. So here we go. You guys, two sides who know each other well. As I said, you know, uh, Tama Tonga and the Good Brothers certainly share some old memories with each other. Bad luck Fale as well to go along with it. And that is certainly, uh, you know, it, it's a past from many moons ago. There's no doubt about it, but it is a past. Nonetheless, big title match coming up for our main event here. Will it be five for the Good Brothers? Will they become five-time tag team champions here tonight over the Gorillas of Destiny? We are about to find out. That uh, Intercontinental title match is to anything to go off of. We're in for a huge main event this evening, folks. Two of the greatest tag teams on the planet doing battle. It is going to be immense. No doubt about it. It's definitely one that either side could win. It's definitely one that's going to be exciting us all. No matter which side you're on, no matter which camp you're in, these guys are immensely talented. I will say that even as someone who isn't really a fan of the Gorillas of Destiny as people because, of course, they're under the umbrella of the originals, but they are an immensely talented tag team. So too are Gallows and Anderson. So here we go. Big time. Tag team title match coming up for us. Big time main event coming our way. Carl Anderson will start things off with Tangaloa. Who will leave with those tag team titles? We are about to find out. Bell rings were underway. And these two men get straight to the fighting. 
Huge shots there from Tangelo with a Silverback Gorilla really playing up to his name there as he rocked Anderson and then lays him out with that atomic drop there. Wasting little time in getting into the, the hard worker things it would seem are these athletes. In the corner we go. Huge uppercut there from Carl Anderson. Just as significant of a counter there by Tangaloa up on the shoulders. What will happen here? Fireman's carry, flapjack there from Tangaloa. Nice. Quick offense. A specialty in some ways to the Gorillas of Destiny's arsenal. Makes them that much more dangerous. Covers made by Tangaloa early on. Kick out by Carl Anderson. Tell you what though. Do find it a bit interesting that they didn't decide to put Bad Luck Farley in this matchup because of that man on the outside of Luke Gallows. Tangelo was heavy. Tangelo is a big guy. But he ain't no Luke Gallows. And we saw at Judgment Day how Farley was able to contain Damian Priest and Killian Dane. Makes you wonder. Maybe, maybe it's just the idea of the chemistry that these two men have. Quite literal brothers of one another. I mean, that's why they're in the contest, because they realize they're not going to beat them maybe off of size and power, but they're going to beat them off of chemistry. It is a battle between two of the greatest teams in this universe. Brain Buster on the knee there by Anderson as Tama Tonga comes back in. Great counter there by Anderson, and he's looking to get the seven footer in this one. Huge uppercut in the corner. Will we see? The big man making his presence felt in this contest tag is made. You better believe it. Luke Gallows, the legal man. And straight to work on Tomatonga. What happened in the past, what happened overseas, that's out of the window now. All that matters to these guys are the tag team titles. Like I said, many moons ago. Dropped down there by, uh, by Tomatonga. Oh, right into the ribs. Gallows quite literally charging into that one. Intercontinental title range certainly found a new edge to Tama Tonga. There's no doubt about it. Surprising to see. Must, uh, must be said, but he's definitely really tacked on to things. He's definitely really woken up. I would say he's got better in the ring as well. Nice double drop kick there from the champions. What can happen now? Trying to get the tag in, but Tangaloa just ruthlessly stomping away. Trying to take any kind of fight and life out of the big man. And I suppose that's the way, if you want to get Gallows out of this contest, that's the way you do it. Huge splash in the corner. Tag team champions controlling this match for the most part. Single leg Boston Crab now being applied on, on a Gallows. That'll do so much more damage considering the height of this man, considering the torment his knees already go through. But Gallo's able to kick himself away there. And maybe find some free space to work with. What happens now? Kicking the gut, good strikes there from Luke Gallo's. Backs himself up and a big lariat will send Tangaloa to the outside. Oh, lay quick to get him up to his feet there. Trying to... Wake up Tangaloa as Anderson now comes back into this contest with a drop kick. And Anderson looking for a suplex, counter made there by Tangaloa again. Maybe it's ring rust for the Good Brothers. Maybe it was the fact that they weren't able to shine on ECW quite how we all expected them to. Whereas the Gorillas of Destiny have just been focused on the on the, the target at hand for as long as possible. They have been busy in the ring. That may be why they're able to control this matchup right now. Certainly no signs of ring rust from the tag team champions as they get closer and closer, it feels like, to retaining those titles. Tamatonga all over Carl Anson right now. Huge splash in the corner from the bad boy. Anderson put the fight back there. You just realize these two guys share the same finish. They're both, of course, using the gun stun as often as they can. Cover made here by Carl Anderson. Looking for victory kick out there. Just watching. You're just waiting for this match to implode because you know that it will. Look out from behind. Forearm in the back. Rolling gun stun. 
A rolling variation, maybe. But a break made by Gallows. Leaping DDT. Gallows out of the ring. Gun stun countered by Anderson. Drop kick now from the machine gun. Anderson lifts up Tamatonga. Gun stun! Gun stun to Tamatonga. New tag team champions now. Two on one advantage effectively. Tangle over there. Makes the save. Takes care of Anderson. Both men down. Anderson right back up to his feet though. Tamatonga still down here. The opening is there for the Good Brothers. But Tama Tonga, able to fight Don. Huge neck breaker takes Anderson off his feet. Gallows asking to get back in this one. And he may well get his wish in the corner. Goes Tama Tonga. Tags made. What can the Good Brothers come up with now? Double axe handle on the small of the back for Tama Tonga. Remember, it was only recently that Tama Tonga came back from injuries to his neck as well. So that could be a focal point. That gun stun could have maybe tweaked those injuries a little bit, tweaked some of the nerves in there and really found an opening for the challengers. That match picked up in that moment, though. And you still wonder with Farley at ringside, what do the originals have at their sleeve? What shenanigans, what cheating ways could they have? What strength though from Tama Tonga with a belly to belly suplex on Gallows. Tag made. Tangaloa back in. And taking a pace from the authors of Pain's book with the last chapter. Using any move they can think of to claim victory. Huge clothesline from Tangaloa, but a one count is all that it gets. Shrugging off that kick in the back now. Wait a minute, there's movement at ringside. Fale making a short movement there as these two men scrap in the ring. Fale's going under the apron. They do have something up their sleeve, and it's a steel chair. Fale bringing a steel chair into the mix now. What could happen here? Gallo swinging away. Counter away by Tangaloa. Fale distracting the referee. Tangaloa's got the chair in his hands. Not this way. Oh! Gallo sends the chair into the face of Tangaloa. Choke slam from Gallows. Ref didn't see it. Plan backfired. Plan backfired on the Gorillas of Destiny. Tag made to Anderson. Magic killer. Cover made. Carl Anderson covers. Will it be? We've got new tag team champions. The drive for five. Five time tag team champions. Gallows and Anderson have done it. The Good Brothers are tag team champions once again. I said it. I said they were the best tag team in the world. And they proved it. Back up against the wall. Deck stacked against them. They did it. They win. What the hell is Shane McMahon doing out here now? You are kidding me. You are kidding me. McMahon's ordering the match to be restarted. The bell has sounded. Oh my goodness, Tagaloa. Tagaloa from behind on Anderson. The originals. Steal one from that son of a bitch. This can't stand. Surely this can't stand. Gallows and Anderson at the match one. There was no cheating. But once again, the originals have a lackey in the palm of their hands. And they blatantly cheat their way to hold it under the tag team titles. This, there is no other words for it. This is bullshit, ladies and gentlemen.